I'm riding one of the fastest freight trains in America. This train is booking it, man. Carrying millions of dollars worth of merchandise. There it is. That's your plasma screen TV right there. Across deserts, through mountains, wow. and under cities to keep America's economy running. My name is Matt Baum. Ever since I was a kid, I've been obsessed with trains. My day job, I work on a railroad in Maine. But this is my dream. To ride the biggest, fastest, most awesome trains in history. When most people think about LA, they're thinking about palm trees and they're thinking about movie stars. But not me, baby. I'm thinking about trains. That's right. And this one right here is one of the biggest, fastest freight trains in the world. Moving 15 million pounds of freight all across the United States at speeds up to 70 miles per hour. This is Burlington Northern Santa Fe's double stack container train from Los Angeles to Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. At 7,000 feet long, this train is like four Sears Towers, laid end to end. And it's packed full of high-end consumer goods straight off the boat from Asia. From stereo systems, to plasma screen TVs, to iPods. When you're hauling stuff this valuable, there's millions and millions of dollars worth of cargo here. You've got to move it, baby. BNSF has just 48 hours to get this train to its distribution depot in Texas. If they don't make it, the store won't get its shipment, and you won't get your Xbox. To get there, it must cross some of the toughest terrain in America. The train travels 1,500 miles from the port of Los Angeles in California over the steep inclines of Cajon Pass, through the blistering heat of the Mojave Desert, across Abo Canyon, New Mexico, and arrives 48 hours later in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm starting my journey here. This is Terminal Island. It's home to the busiest port in the United States. Located off the coast of San Pedro, California, Terminal Island rests in between the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. We'll be loading our train up at the massive container facility that is Pier 400. It has six berths, 7,000 feet of dock space, and 14 key cranes. This place is gigantic. 500 vessels carrying 29 million tons of cargo arrive at the port every year. And it all arrives here in these intermodal containers. Intermodal containers are amazing. They can go straight from a ship, onto a train, and then onto a truck without ever being opened. Using containers is one of the most efficient and safest ways of shipping cargo throughout the world. Here's how it works. The containers come off the ship. They're brought over here to the staging yard, where they're stacked four high, six deep, and arranged by destination. Next thing that happens, this top loader comes in. What this guy's doing is he's picking the 2010 container up. He's going to put it on this truck right here.
forklift locks onto each 20-ton container so it can be picked up and loaded. One container weighs as much as 10 Ford Explorers. These guys have to repeat this procedure hundreds of times to load a 7,000-foot double-stack container train. It's truly amazing. They're going to head to the train now with it. This is what the train looks like before it's loaded. They're going to put the containers into these empty well cars right here. The reason why they call it a well car is this depression right here. The container comes in and it holds it in place. Think of this like the cup holder in your car. Once the containers are in, they're not going anywhere. They're starting to load the train. I'm going to get in there and see how they lock these containers together. All right, get out of the way. Here they come. This is Daniel. He's going to show us how we do this. It's Daniel's job to make sure all 250 containers get from the trucks onto the train. This is the same process they used at the staging yard. Boy, those forklifts sure do come in handy. This is dangerous stuff. Got to be very careful up here. They're bringing the container in. They're lowering it into the well right now. Bam! All right, so the container's in the well. Correct, secured. Yep. That's one down, 249 more to go. But we're not just loading one layer of containers. This train's going to roll double step. It's the most efficient way to move cargo because you're moving twice as much every trip. Here's how it's done. This guy right here, this is called a cone. Once the first level of containers are in position, Daniel attaches these 12-pound steel cones to the top of the container. Then, the second container is lined up with the cone, lowered and locked into place. It's like putting together a giant Lego set. You just go bam, just like that. This 20-ton container is locked in, double stack. It's that simple. These guys are such pros that they can load and lock a train of this size in less than nine hours. Here it is, this is the last container. These guys have been working on this train all day. Once they get this loaded, we're gonna be ready to go. And that's it! The 7,000 foot train's ready to go! This 7,000 foot long beast is packed full of high end consumer goods. From stereo systems to iPods, plasma screen TVs. And it's got 48 hours to get from the Port of Los Angeles to the BNSF distribution hub in Fort Worth, Texas. Any delay, and when you go to the store, your $100 running shoes won't be there. This is a race to get cargo to Texas in 48 hours. But before we can hit the open road, we need to get off Terminal Island. This right here is Badger Bridge. It's the only way for these double stack container trains to get off Terminal Island. Every day, 90 trains move off the island. And without this bridge, they'd all be stuck. But what about the ships? If this were a normal bridge, it'd be too low for them to get under, and they'd be stuck too. The solution? A lift bridge. Its key design feature? To get out of the way. The amazing thing about this bridge is it not only serves trains, but also boats. Let's go see how it works. 
This is the operation center where Tim, the dispatcher, manages this 180 foot long bridges every move. This is incredible. I've never been in a place like this before. You've got trains coming over the bridge, boats going under the bridge. All the cargo that's getting loaded in that terminal wouldn't go east if it wasn't for this bridge. So Tim, who gets first dibs? First dibs is always the vessels. Vessels have the right of way. Since boats can't stop as easily as trains, they always get first dibs. This maritime law goes back over 100 years. So even though we're ready to roll, we have to wait on the sidelines for two boats to pass. So Tim, you've got a loaded train ready to leave the terminal? That's correct. With one click of the mouse, Tim controls all the activity on this three mile stretch of track. It seems like it's a game of chess. You're, you're thinking probably three, four, five moves ahead. That's correct. PHL badge bridge, PHL 66 over. PHL 66, you'll need to look out for the UP 8371 inside a tick div as well as an outbound train on AD1 over. It's the chess game. It's happening right in front of us right now. Exactly. Tim, let's lift this sucker. It's just that easy. Wow! Look at that bridge lift. Holy cow! Here's how it works. The weight of the bridge is offset by two massive counterweights, which are cabled to either side of the bridge with giant pulleys. Wow, Tim, look at it. There it goes. The counterweights drop, activating the pulleys, which lift the bridge. This baby goes up approximately 30 times per day. Here comes that tug, look at him go. Once the boats pass, the bridge is lowered and the tracks realign perfectly with the help of a special kind of track joint called the Connolly joint. The bridge is locked and ready. Let's run some trains. Bad bridge, BSF 7508 over. BSF 7508 over. Yeah, the red flags are removed. Okay, Eddie, Standing by, thanks, huh? Wow, this is cool. We've just crossed Badger Bridge. We're about to enter one of the most impressive railroad engineering feats in US history. Behold, the Alameda Trench at 10 miles long, 50 feet wide, and 33 feet deep. This trench runs the length of downtown LA. Cool, we're about to go into it right now. If it wasn't for the Alameda Trench, getting a train through L.A. would be a nightmare. Before the trench was built, the city's 200 signal crossings were a major cause of traffic jams and pollution. So in 1989, a team of engineers came up with a brilliant solution. Instead of running trains through the city, why not build a set of tracks under it? So Jim, what kind of speeds are you guys doing through the corridor? Uh, it's 40 miles an hour through the corridor here. And no grade crossings? No, not through the corridor. Right, that out. So you've gone from 10 miles an hour to being able to move trains at 40 miles an hour. That's right. This is hammer time in here. Move the trains. The trench opened for business in 2002. Since then, the tracks have served over 100,000 trains. We're actually underneath LA right now. When I think of railroading in 2008, this is what I think of. It's like a science fiction movie. It's like something from like when I was a little kid. Look at it. This is what it's all about. Wondering what all those struts are for? There are more than 2,000 of these 2,500 pound concrete supports. And that's what makes the trench earthquake proof. 
as everybody knows, there's earthquakes in LA often, so if there's a big earthquake, then the walls will stay steady instead of falling in. We're cruising through here, and so far, no earthquakes. Phew, being from Maine, I was a little worried about that. All right, that's it. We went through the trench, it was great. Now it's on to San Bernardino and Cajon Pass. This ride's about to get hairy. I'm headed from Los Angeles, California to Fort Worth, Texas on a BNSF double stack container train. I've always wanted to ride this train. Uh, Packed full of high-end consumer goods, this merchandise is traveling in intermodal containers. That means they can be transported from a train to the back of an 18-wheeler truck without being unpacked. The railroads are the fastest and most efficient way to move freight across America. But this train faces some major obstacles. One of the problems with today's double stack container trains is that they're running on systems that were built 150 years ago and these systems can't handle the volumes. And the busiest stretch of track on this line is right here at Cajon Pass. 90 miles northeast of Los Angeles, nestled in between the San Bernardino and San Gabriel Mountains, it's the only way for trains to get over the 3,800 foot elevation. It's one of the oldest pieces of railroad in the country, and it is busy. 100 trains travel through here every day on BNSF's two tracks, but that's just not enough. With container traffic volumes growing every day, BNSF has to do something to add capacity to their lines. The only way to keep this route from clogging up completely is to build a third track. When it's finished, they'll have increased their daily capacity by a whopping 50%. To do it, they're literally carving out a mountain. One of the biggest jobs on the project is right here. This place is amazing. looking at right here is over a hundred feet of a cross section of a mountain that these guys have dug out to make room for the new track. This is Dennis and he's in charge. This used to be a tunnel. This when you guys tunnel. started you were at the top of this. Yes. Wow this is this is absolutely amazing. The tunnel that stood here was not wide enough to fit another set of train tracks so they blasted it away. What they're doing right now is they're shoring up this wall so it doesn't cave in on the trains when they pass through. The first job, drill a bunch of holes into the side of the hill. It starts out really... Ah, that is loud!